So let's get started. So the reason why I'm just going to pause for a moment here on this uh, first slide is because I just want to draw your attention to the bottom of the slide here. You can see the convocation URL. If you haven't already, you should go to this website and bookmark it. It's the best source of information for you. Um, we update it all the time. And so it's, uh, you know, always is the best place for information for you that's up to date. Okay. So I think most of you at this point have handled this. In case you haven't, I'm just going to take a moment just to talk about eligibility. For master student, um, you will have to be, you're a graduate from October 2022, February 2023, or May 2023. Those are the three groups that process in convocation. In order to be clear to graduate, you had to have applied through the registrar's office by February 1st. So that's in our rear view. So hopefully you did that already. Um, if you have questions, you're concerned about eligibility for whatever the reason may be, um, then here's the contact information for uh, the registrar's office right here at your fingertips. Give them a call or email them and they can help you. Uh, okay, so then we'll just talk quickly about doctoral. It's just slightly different for doctoral because uh, what you're going through the Office of Doctoral Studies, and you have to have completed the intention to defend by February 1st. Uh, if you have any concerns about that, then just please contact OES and they'll help you. You can see their phone number here, their email, and their website. Okay, so the next thing to do um, is just talk about the fact that we organize convocation by department, not by program. And it's a little bit counterintuitive for TC students because you all um, identify or most of you identify by program and not by department, but we can't organize convocation across 60 departments, so, uh, 60 programs. So we organize it by 10 departments. So if you don't know your uh, department off the top of your head, um, I'll show you a great shortcut that you'll find on the convocation website, which is an easy key and you'll find your, um, your department pretty easily. Um, and then for this year, the graduates will be divided into four ceremonies. So let's Let's just talk about that. So here is just a quick overview of the four ceremonies. Um, so ceremony one is MST and ORL, and that's on Wednesday, May 17th at 7 p.m. And then the next day, Thursday, May 18th at 10 a.m. is CCP and HUD. That's ceremony two. Then ceremony three is the same day, the 18th. Oh, hang on just a second. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Okay, sorry, let's go back to that. Uh, so ceremony three is BBS, HBS, and ITS, and that's Thursday, May 18th at 2.30 p.m. Then ceremony four is that evening, 7 p.m., A&H, C&T, and EPSA. So those are your four ceremonies. And then we'll talk about the overall schedule. So this is a new ceremony that we were just made aware of by um, the School of Journalism at Columbia. So they have organized um, through a student who's received a grant, the CU Disability Affinity Graduation Celebration. And that's on Saturday, April 22nd uh, at Pulitzer Hall at 1 p.m. So that's a new event just to make you aware of. Um, and then Monday, May 15th at 5 p.m. is TC's Diversity and First Generation Celebration for Families. And that is in Cowan Auditorium. And then our overall um, schedule for Wednesday and Thursday. So Wednesday, May 17th at 10.30 is the all-university commencement, and CU organizes that. TC doesn't. And that takes place on CU's College Walk. And just um, a little added TC part of this is that um, graduates who are going to that ceremony can line up here at TC between 7.30 and 8.30, kind of, you kind of meet and then you line up at 8.30 in Russell Courtyard, and then you all process to commencement. Um, and then you get into your seats at around nine o'clock, and that ceremony begins at 10.30. Wednesday, May 17th at seven o'clock is ceremony one. So that's for master's and doctoral graduates from MST and ORL. Uh, then on Thursday, May 18th at 10 o'clock, we have ceremony two. So that is for master's and doctoral grads from CCP and HUD. 
Thursday the 18th at 2.30 is our third ceremony. That's master's and doctoral from BBS, HBS, and ITS. And then Thursday the 18th at 7, ceremony four, and that's master's and doctoral again, A&H, and and EPSA. So that's the overall schedule. I know that's a lot, um, but all of this information is on the convocation website. And then you'll also get this PowerPoint after um, the webinar is over. So you'll have it as a quick uh, resource. All right. So I just want to drill down a little bit into your schedule for the day. So I'll just do this with ceremony one, but it's basically the same template for all four. So let's say you're ceremony one. So you're either an MST or ORL. What we ask is that grads arrive at the venue at 5.30 and guests come separately at six o'clock to line up. Then at 6.45, the procession begins and the procession will begin at 6.45. We are on time um, and seven o'clock the ceremony begins. And then we think that the ceremony will be about an hour and 45 to two hours in length. That's a, a, good, a, good, uh, a good estimate of time. All right, and so you'll see I built this out for the other ceremonies. So when you get this um, on email, you'll see this. Uh, but so I'm not going to go through it over and over. But you can see I did for ceremony two, ceremony three, and ceremony four. So you'll be able to just see your schedule. Um, the United Palace is our venue, um, and it's a beautiful venue. It's up in Washington Heights on Broadway, between 175th and 176th. We like it because it's close to TC. It's cl very close to mass transit. I think like four buses stop right in front. Um, the train is close by. Um, capacity is about 3,300. And what we love about it is that it has excellent sight lines for guests. Sorry, guys. Uh, okay, so then here are the ceremonies. So uh, just to tell you what happens in the program. So you'll hear a speech by President Tom Bailey, then the student speaker, and then there'll be a speech by the recipient of the TC Medal for Distinguished Service. And then, oh my gosh, sorry guys. I don't know who keeps calling me, but it is very annoying. Uh, there's a musical performance by grads of the music and music ed program. Master's graduates walk across the stage when their name is called, and doctoral graduates are hooded on stage by their advisor. So that's sort of what happens during each ceremony. So let's talk about tickets. That's the thing that everyone wants to uh, wants to hear about. Um, just to remind you again, you can see down here the URL for um, the convocation website. Again, visit and uh, and please bookmark that. So convocation tickets. So ticket registration opens on Wednesday, April 5th at noon, and that's Eastern Standard. And it closes on Friday, April 21st at 5 p.m. Um, and you can request up to five tickets. You'll be able to register. You'll be able to register through four tickets through the convocation website. So that's when I say like bookmark the convocation website. There's many reasons to do it. That's just one of them. Uh, so let's talk about the ticket lottery. So if there are tickets left over after the ceremony, after the 21st of April, and there may or there may not be, and we don't know um, if there will be, but if they are, we will have a ticket lottery and we'll uh, reach out to all the students who have registered for tickets between April 5th and April 21st and say, hey, we have extra tickets and they'll be on a first come first serve basis. And we'll just keep, you know, we'll just keep allowing students to register for tickets as long as we still have them. Our goal is to get rid of all of, all of the tickets. So ticket FAQs, just a couple of things. So I already mentioned that ticket registration is done through the convocation website. Um, tickets are by seat. So it's more like if you buy tickets to like a concert or a Broadway play. So they're not general admission tickets, they're by seat. So when you click into it, you'll be able to actually see the floor plan of the United Palace Theater and you'll be able to pick your seats. Um, just a note that graduates don't need a ticket. So you're not one of the five tickets. You'll get five guest tickets. Your academic attire is your ticket. All the tickets are electronic as you might you might expect. Um, you'll get them immediately after you register to your email account from Bellatos, which is the ticket company that we work with. You can either print your tickets and give them to your guests if that's convenient, or you can have, uh, have them scanned from your device. Uh, a couple of last things on ticket FAQs. We 
do hold back tickets for late grad ads. So this is um, more appropriate uh, for doctoral students. So there are doctoral students often who are defending after April 21st. We'll hold some tickets back for the people in that group. Tickets are transferable, but they can't be sold. So what that means is that, you know, if I have five tickets and I need eight and you have uh, five tickets and you need two, you can give me your tickets. Um, but you can't sell me your tickets because a uh, couple of reasons. It's illegal. You can't sell something that has no commercial value. Um, and also there isn't much of a market for selling tickets because most people get the number of tickets that they need. Um, so I get this question all the time. Do children need a ticket? Yes, they need a ticket if they're sitting in a seat. If they sit on your lap comfortably, uh, no ticket is required. Like, you know, it's up to you. We're not going to say like, oh, at eight years old, they need a seat. Um, but just, it's a common sense thing. If you can sit with them on your lap for two hours, um, they, they probably don't need a ticket. Um, a couple of notes here. Children are not permitted to sit with graduates. They can only sit in guest seating areas. Strollers are not permit, permitted in seating areas, but we have stroller parking in the lobby um, of the United Palace Theater, so it's very convenient. Uh, so just a couple of notes there. Okay, so then tickets for the diversity and first generation celebration for families. So we'll send invitations out on Monday, April 24th, and you'll be able to register for up to four tickets for that ceremony. If we have extra tickets, we'll be able to, you'll be able to register for those tickets as well. Uh, and then let's talk about commencement tickets. So this is, is very often a question that we get. Um, we'll send you the link for CU tickets on Monday, April 24th. You'll only be able to request two tickets and there are no extras and it's unfortunate. Um, but I just wanna talk to you just overall about tickets. So you're gonna get five tickets for United Palace Theater, maybe more if you get more in the lottery or if you want more from the lottery. Um, then you get four for diversity and first gen if you're going to that ceremony and then you get two for CU. So I would just think broadly of the of your group of family and friends, who do you want to come to what? And I would just pause about CU and say, CU is outdoors. It could be raining. It could be hot. Um, the ground is very uneven. You could be walking on pavement, on brick, on grass, on dirt. The lines are very long. Um, I would say CU does an amazing job at getting people through the the uh, ticket scanning line, but still, a you know, it's still thousands of people coming in. So it's, you know, it's still a line. I don't think that I would bring young children to that. I don't think I would bring elderly people to that. Um, I think, you know, it could just not be as comfortable for them as you would want it to be. I know a lot of TC students go just with their cohorts or their classmates, um, with no guests and just have some fun and enjoy it. And I think that the concept is that at C, you know the CU commencement, basically everyone just uh, as a as a school will stand up and sit down. So there's no individual recognition. So the president will say, you know, teachers college, please stand up. You'll all stand up. You'll be recognized, and then you'll sit down. Whereas at uh, convocation ceremony, you will come across the stage. If you're a master's student, you'll have your name read. If you're a doctoral student, you'll be hooded. So I think just think about what the elements of the program are and then think about how you're going to distribute your tickets. All right, enough said about tickets. Let's get on to academic attire. Again, I'm going to point out the convocation website. URL is down there. Uh, okay, so let's talk about uh, master's attire first. Uh, so I think probably a lot of you know this. You can see that um, master's attire is the blue Columbia robe with a blue cap, which is also called a mortarboard. Um, our master's students don't wear, master's students at Columbia don't wear hoods. You can buy your academic attire at the CU bookstore and it's $72. A question I always get is, can we decorate our cap and wear stoles and cords? And absolutely, yes, you can do all of the above. Um, let us talk a little bit about how you get your academic attire. It's already available at the bookstore. It started, uh, it was available starting March 8th. Um, so yesterday, you can also place orders online from March 13th to April 29th. You can use this link. You can click on this link now, but it won't it won't work, but it will on March 13th. The only thing I'm gonna say about this is that it's expensive to ship. Sometimes the shipping, I think last year, the shipping was like $13 or something. So, I mean, I feel like if you can get yourself to, you know, if you can get yourself to TC or, or to the bookstore, um, I would say do that. 
uh, they have great hours, which I'll show you in a minute. They're open seven days a week. So if you can do that, I think save yourself the money. Why not? Um, also, GSLD has an academic attire lottery. So they have a limited supply, but it's not that limited. It's like a pretty decent supply of academic attire for master's graduates. Um, and you, and I'll show you when we get to the website, how you can register for the lottery through our website, through the convocation website. I think register, why not? Try to sell, save yourself $72. And then they'll announce the results on April 14th. So that even if you don't win, you still have plenty of time to get your academic attire from the bookstore. So I say, do this, why not? Apply for this and hopefully you'll get it. All right, so let's move on to doctoral attire. So the doctoral attire you can see looks a little different um, from the masters. Uh, you'll see here that there's like these black velvet stripes down the front and black velvet stripes on the arms. Um, that's the difference between a master's and a doctoral robe. And then this graduate here has a hood that has a light blue velvet. On the outside, that means that this graduate has um, earned uh, an EDD. This graduate here has a darker blue. That means that this graduate um, earned a PhD. So that's the difference between the two. Um, so you'll wear the Columbia blue gown, the black uh, doctoral cap, which is also called a TAM. It's like a very soft eight-sided little hat. Uh, and then you wear your hood. So you can rent your attire from the bookstore or you can buy it. So to purchase it is $80 for the TAM. You have to purchase that. They won't rent you that. And then you rent your gown for $78 and 40 for your hood. Um, and again, you're welcome to wear stoles and cords. If you could figure out a way to decorate a velvet TAM, you're very welcome to do that as well. It's just not as easy as a cap. Uh, okay, so let's talk about renting doctoral attire. So you can reserve it by April 11th without incurring a late fee. So that's just to get on that because April 11th is right around the corner. Um, you can do in-store pickup or ship to home options. Um, you can order online, but you can see the deadlines here are to April 7th. So um, anyway, so that's all important information. If you wanna purchase your attire, lots of folks do wanna purchase their attire if they're going into an academic job. The gown is $733, the hood is 184, and the tan, which you already bought, is 80. Um, so it's about $997. You can buy each of these components separately. If you want to buy your attire, you'll do that through the bookstore. Uh, okay, so here's the bookstore. Here's the facade of the bookstore, so you know what it looks like. Um, and it's on 115th and Broadway, and here's their phone number. And then here's a little map, and then their store hours. So you can see they're open seven days a week. It's pretty good, um, open till seven o'clock at night during the week. So it, it is pretty convenient. And you can actually get your attire even up to the day of your ceremony. I don't recommend that um, because for masters, they're like, in these tiny little bags. And so they're very wrinkled, uh, you have to iron them. So I don't recommend the day of, uh, but anyway, you could do that if you needed to. Okay, so another uh, frequent question is about portraits. So our partner is Grad Images and they take your pictures. They have sittings now that you don't have to pay for to sit, but you pay for whatever pictures you want to purchase. And the prices really range. Um, we'll actually post them on the website, but it really depends on what you purchase. Um, so the prices are all different. Uh, maybe you just want one portrait or maybe you want like a whole, you know, portfolio of, of pictures. And so that would be more expensive. So we already had our first sitting here on March 6th. Um, our next one is on March 23rd at Millbank. And you can see that April 4th, April 12th, April 27th. And then they will be at the ceremony on May 17th and May 18th. Um, and they will be back here on campus to do portraits. So they'll get your picture as you're walking across the stage um, or being hooded. And then they can also those same days do portraits. So you can do it before convocation if you want a portrait or on the days of convocation. And also you don't have to do any of it. It's all optional. So it's up to you what you'd like to do with portraits. Here's their um, customer service number. They're pretty good. I mean, they send, they'll send you an email with all of your pictures, usually 48 hours um, after they take the pictures. 
Um, they're pretty good about that. Sometimes someone gets lost in the shuffle, but they always find the pictures. So I've never heard that grad, and I've done this for like 10 years. I've never heard the grad images lost pictures. Um, so there's their number. They're pretty good. Uh, they're a pretty good partner. Okay, so let's talk about just taking care of your guests here. Uh, so first of all, just think a little bit about your guests and yourself um, and think about if anybody needs any kind of accommodations. If so, just reach out to OASID like today, just send them an email. Um, here's their email or you can call them tomorrow um, and they they will, um, you'll be able to request accommodations like sign language interpreters, wheelchair access, you know, accessible seating. Um, so it's, I think it's good if you are known to them before convocation um, so that they can help really create a plan for you or your guest to make sure that everyone has like a great uh, experience. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, how your guests get to the United Palace Theater. So our recommendation is to use mass transit or Uber Lyft taxi, you know, something like that. And then you can either drop off on Broadway or on Wadsworth Terrace um, at 170, you know, between 175th and 176th. There are lots of parking lots, but the United Palace, there are tons of parking lots in the area and we have them all listed on our website, but the United Palace Theater says that it, that they get filled up quickly. Um, so just a note to self, we're really recommending mass transit or like a taxi or an, or an Uber or something like that. Um, just a little bit on security, everyone who goes, every guest, every student will have to walk through a metal detector and have their bags checked. You'll also be wanted. Um, so what does that mean? Travel light, no luggage, no backpacks, no boxes, no banners, no signs, balloons, et cetera. Like just travel as light as you can. Um, really importantly, like no lighters, no vape pens, no e-cigarettes will be allowed. If they are in your bag or in your pocket, um, they'll be confiscated. So just don't bring them. Uh, after the ceremony, this is really important. So the United Palace Theater is just this giant theater stuck in, you know, a very busy part of town. Um, and so, you know, when you leave a Broadway show and it's so crowded on the sidewalks because you're literally walking right out onto a sidewalk, it's the same concept. So make a plan to meet your guests away from the front entrance of the theater. So we, you will be able to exit either on Wadsworth or on Broadway. So that will help a little bit. But I would just say like, Tell your guests like, okay, meet me on, you know, if you're going downtown, meet me on 173rd and Broadway, I'll meet you there. Or if you're going uptown, you know, meet me on 177th, just so you, you get away from the crowd and then, or, you know, meet me at the restaurant where you're going for lunch, like what, you know, whatever makes sense for you. But I would just try to get away from the front of the building. Um, so if you don't have time to relay all this information to your guests, which is, uh, you know, it's your busy time of year, just trying to finish up your capstones and your, you know, papers and your dissertations, you know, invite any of your guests to a webinar, happy to have them on, answer their questions. You can give them our website, you can give them our email, um, give them our phone number, and we're very, very happy to answer guest questions. So it just like relieves a little bit from you. All right, so that takes care of this part of the presentation. Again, I will be sending you um, these slides so that you'll have them immediately after this session. Um, but now I promised you I was gonna show you the convocation website. So how you get to the convocation website is you do tc.edu and then forward slash convocation, just like that. And boom, here you go. So you can see you know, basic information here on the landing page, you know, the basic schedules, the departments, are all here, information about the tickets. Mostly everything here is what is on the PowerPoint. A little bit more, a nicer picture uh, here of the United Palace Theater. You can see how beautiful it is. You will be walking across that stage. Um, and then just a little bit here about commencement. And then I promised you I was gonna show you how to find your program, if, uh, how to find your department if you only know your program. So you click on this button and I'll take you to this list. And you can see if you slide down here, you're like, oh, I'm, I am uh, motor learning and it's biobehavioral sciences, right? Or, oh, I'm psychology and education, counseling and clinical psychology. So it's an easy way to, you know, go backwards, get your program, but you don't have your department. So know your department before you come to convocation. Uh, okay, so let me just show you a couple other things before I open up to questions. Just a reminder, just put your questions in the chat box. 
Um, so if you go here to 2023 graduates, let's just pop into uh, like ceremony three, you'll find here just a little bit more uh, on your schedule here. An important point that everyone asks, is the ceremony live streamed? Yes, it will be live streamed. So your guests who can't make it um, to the ceremony will be able to watch it on the live stream. They'll be able to access that link through the convocation website, tickets, portraits. You can actually register here for portraits. You can just click right there, make your appointment, um, and then more about academic attire. So that's what's in that tab, professional portraits. I think we went over this already academic attire. So here is where I promised you I would show you where you can register for the lottery, for the lottery for master's students. So you can see the lottery opens on April 3rd. So if you click on this link, it won't be live, but it will be live on April 3rd. So that is that. Guest information. So there's a lot of good stuff here that your guests will um, find useful. So information about tickets, mass transit, you can see just a ton of buses and subways that go here. Everything about bag check, all of this kind of stuff about bag check, what the prohibited items are. I don't know who is bringing a scooter to graduation, but they feel strongly that you should not. But like they don't want you to bring a tripod with a camera. So like that's an important thing to keep in mind because lots of people want to bring a tripod and they won't let it in the building. Um, TC will have a pop-up shop there. So if you want to buy souvenirs, you can do that. The same for flowers. Um, here is the aforementioned list of parking garages. Here are restaurants near United Palace Theater um, that we like, that we wanted to recommend. And then here, restaurants near TC and then hotels. So just a quick note about hotels. If you have guests coming in from out of town, these are hotels that have a CU rate. So what you do is you just call the hotel and you say, hey, you know, I'm coming in at this time for graduation. What is the CU rate? And then they'll tell you what the CU rate is for that time, for the days that you're going to be there. Um, and then again, we talked about accessibility. So if you um, have some accommodation requests, here's the um, uh, here's the phone number and email for OASID. And then we have some information down here about visas for international grads. Um, additional information, if you want to invite any of your family members to join a webinar, here is, here's how you sign up for those. We have actually after tonight, three more left. Uh, and then we have some convocation information desks where we're live. Um, we're always in the hallway of Zankel. And we're there just to answer questions for like an hour at a time. And so you see our next one is March 22nd. And then we have a bunch thereafter. Um, and then here is more information about the diversity and first gen celebration for families. So all of that is there. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing. Thank you all very much for coming um, to the webinar. Good luck and congratulations.